Hello God's favorite. Welcome to Saints Family Church. You have come to the right place at the right time and for the right reason. We believe your divine appointment here was earmarked by God. So sit back, prepare your heart and get ready to hear what God has in store for you today. Greetings everyone, I just want to take this time to welcome you in our last online service for the year 2023, our last sermon for the year 2023 as we are about to cross over into the year 2024. We do know very well uh, that God has placed times and seasons in His Word and the Bible tells us that to everything there is a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. Therefore, as we are about to cross over into another season, chronologically, we are cognizant and aware that there is also times that God has placed in his hands, which is what we know as the Kairos. These are the times of God. These are the times that God has set in his uh, calendar for our lives. Please do not forget that there is a calendar or a timeline that God has determined for each and every one of us. When this year uh, started, I shared a message embracing Kairos <clears throat> in a Kronos world. We live in a Kronos world, but we must embrace Kairos. And I said, Kairos, it's God's way of computing time. Therefore, I'm going to read a scripture and then, uh, which is going to be the text for the, uh, which is going to usher us into the year 2024. And uh, if you have your Bibles, I just want to turn your attention to the book of Isaiah chapter number two, and then I'm going to outline what this season is all about, uh, which the Lord is about to usher us into. Isaiah chapter number two and verse number one, it says, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Notice it is the word that Isaiah received from God concerning Judah and Jerusalem, but the Bible says he saw. You don't see words, but you see visions. We see this account also in the book of Genesis 15, verse number one, where the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. So what I'm going to speak should paint a vision. You should be able to visualize the things that I'm going to speak about uh, as we get into the word of God, the, wo the word of the Lord. Now, notice what it's saying. It says the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Verse number two. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. You can underline that. That the mountain, you can underline the word mountain, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. I want you to visualize this. It says the mountain of the Lord's house. So the different mountains, but the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Just try to visualize what I'm reading right now. This is a mountain of God's house. The Bible says it will be established, it will be set up on the top of the mountains. Notice when this is going to happen in the latter days. I'm going to explain what the meaning, the concept of the word latter days so that you can understand whether this message is relevant to us, it's applicable to us, and whether it is not. It says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow into it. All nations shall flow into it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up 
to the mountain of the Lord or the mountain of the house of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion, underline the word Zion, shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, this is so interesting that what I'm going to explain, scripture begins to explain itself. You know, it says, out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Notice how, because Zion is in Jerusalem, so it says, out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the law, it is the word of the Lord. It's going to flow from Zion. It's going to flow from Jerusalem. It's going to flow from the house of the mountain of the Lord. And what is God going to do? He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Now the last line in my text is verse number five. It says, O house of Jacob, which is the Lord's house, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now, the title of my message, which is going to be the theme for the year 2024, it is the season of supernatural exaltation. I want to say it again. It is a season of supernatural exaltation. God is ushering us into a season. And this is a season of supernatural ex exaltation. We take this from the book of Isaiah chapter number two, and now we're going to take it verse upon verse, line upon line, just these five verses to establish whether this word or this prophetic declaration by Isaiah, is it applicable to us or is it just explaining something in the future? Now, I've explained that the word that Isaiah saw, it speaks about a vision which he saw. Now, verse number two, it says, now it shall come to pass in the latter days. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. Now we need to find out what is the scripture meaning when it says in the latter days. Now the first time in the New Testament, in fact, this word is used many times in the Old Testament, but in order to concise uh, this message, but also, you know, I must remind you as you are sitting at home that uh, please prepare your communion elements, get the bread and get the wine. And so that we can be able on the cup, rather, so that we can be able to partake as we come to a close and make uh, the declaration concerning this coming season. So get your bread and get your, your, your cup. Now, the Bible says it shall come to pass in the latter days. Now, the first time in the New Testament the term is used, it's in the book of Acts chapter number 2, in verse number 16 and 17. Actually, this was Peter. Uh, when the Holy Spirit filled the people, uh, you know, it came upon uh, the people who were gathered. Look at what he's saying after the Holy Spirit fell. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 16 uh, to verse number 17, this is Peter's words. He says, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now we are explaining what Isaiah is meaning when he says it shall come to pass in the latter days. He says it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So on the day of Pentecost, Peter, quoting Jewel, states that God promised to give the Holy Spirit in the latter days. And when he spoke, this was the fulfillment of what was spoken by the prophet Jewel. This means that the latter days or the last days, they began according to Peter's usage on the day of Pentecost. 
And that day, when it started, it continued to run up until now. So what Isaiah was saying, it shall come to pass in the latter days, Peter has helped us to understand that the latter days started in the book of Acts chapter number 2, when the church was inaugurated, when the dispensation of the church started. Now let me establish it again from another scripture. The author of the book of Hebrews confirms, uh, you know, this particular term of the latter days. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, I'm reading the New King James Version. It says, God has spoken in these last days, or God has spoken in the latter days to us by his Son, whom he has appointed an heir of all things. I believe now we are beginning to see the applicability and the relevance of what Isaiah spoke about when he says in the latter days. We saw Peter's usage, and we are seeing it also here. It says God has spoken to us in these, you see, the writer of the book of Hebrews helps us understand. He says, in these last days to us by his son, whom he has appointed an heir of all things. Now, what about Paul? When you go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'm not going to read the entirety of it, but from verse 1 to 5, Paul speaks these words to Timothy. He says, but knowing this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedience to parent, unthankful, unholy, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. I believe it should be very clear, based on the way Paul used that word to Timothy or that, you know, warning to Timothy, or that admonition to Timothy, or, you know, that injunction, that it is clear that Timothy must have been living in the last days. And when Peter writes and said, God shall pour out his spirit in the last days, these are the days that you are living in. That makes that prophecy, that makes that vision that Isaiah saw applicable to us, applicable to our day, applicable to this time that you and I are living in. Now, since we have established that what Isaiah saw, it's not some futuristic thing that is coming, but it is the day that you and I are living in, notice then what Isaiah is saying. He said that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. I mean, I don't know about you, but as I read this, I see a supernatural ex exaltation. I see an exaltation above exaltation. Hear this now. This prophecy owes its fulfillment. And this is what God is saying. He says, this is what I want you to know. God says, I am going to establish my house. I'm going to establish my house on the top of the mountains. And whilst you're at the top of the mountains, he said, above the hills. In other words, there's no way in which you are going to miss it. Amen. And he says, and all nations shall flow into it. Many people shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Now, the second thing that we need to explain, after explaining the latter days, when Isaiah is writing and is speaking about the mountain of the Lord's house, and then he speaks about, you know, the mountain of the Lord or the house of Jacob. What is he talking about? So that we will know where, where is that exaltation taking place. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 5 is quite a familiar scripture. Listen to this. It says, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. A spiritual house house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now we are beginning to decode what that house is. It's not a physical house somewhere in Jerusalem, but we are learning that it is also a spiritual house. 
individually and corporately. Here, Peter, I believe, is addressing believers corporately. But I want to show you that this house that he is talking about, Isaiah is talking about, is not limited or it does not end with a corporate gathering of believers. I'm going to show you two scriptures. The first one, it's in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, do you not know that you are the temple? Notice the word house, God's house, which is in the mountains, exalted above the hills. Now, we're dealing with that house where it is. It says, you are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Remember, when Isaiah speaks about the temple or the house of God, which was in Jerusalem, it's not so much about the location as much as it's about what was contained in the temple in Jerusalem. It was the ark of God, which was representing the presence of God. Now here, we are beginning now to the scriptures now are beginning to unfold that don't look out there. You also as a spiritual person and you also as a believer or believers as we come together, we are constituted or we are named as the temple of God. And wherever you are gathering as believers, the Bible says we are the temple of God. So God stays there. God resides there. God dwells there. It says you are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. So if I'll go back to that scripture again, before I continue, it says, it shall come to pass that the house of God shall be exalted. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. What is Isaiah saying if we look at it in the light of what the apostle Paul is saying to us? That we have coming into a season where God, is taking those who are believers corporately. I'm going to deal with individuals. He's taking those who are the believers corporately. He is exalting us. He's exalting his church. He's placing it as it were at the highest point where it will be seen, where it will be noticed, where many people are going to come to us. Why? Because it says we are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, the Bible says, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. There we go. The, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Notice the tense. You are. So wherever you're sitting, wherever believers are gathering together, we need to understand that God is, has constituted us as his temple. He has constituted us as his residence. He has constituted us as his dwelling place. But not only that, God is saying, I want my house to be built. I want my house to be set up. I want my house to be set up high on the mountains, high on the hills. This is the corporate address. Now look at this. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse number 19, I just read 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 to 17. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 19, now this should bless you. We've moved from the corporate constitution. Now we are going to deal with the individuals. Now hear what Paul is saying. Or do you not know? Remember the same Paul who read 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Or do you not know? You see, when Paul is presuming or assuming that you know something, he would say, do you not know? Don't you know this? So when Paul says, do you not know, in a sense, Paul is assuming that you're supposed to know this. Do you not know that your body is the temple? Notice 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, do you, do you not know that you are the temple? It's very interesting. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, it says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? And then he's addressing believers corporately there. And then in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, he says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? I believe wherever you're seated, you're beginning to see what Isaiah 
is saying. May I not leave anybody behind? If Isaiah is telling us here in, the, in, in chapter number 2, and he is saying that in the latter days, it seems as if there's a shift. He says, in the latter days, and I told you when the latter days started, in the day, on the day of Pentecost, or even before that, he says, in the latter days, why I'm saying there's a shift, he says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. God is exalting us. God is exalting the church. God is exalting you as an individual. And that's why I say you are entering into a season of supernatural exaltation. God is the one that is exalting you. Why? Because you are embodying, you are carrying him. You are not praying for exaltation, get this now. You are not asking for exaltation, get this now. You are not fasting for exaltation. God says, it is a season. In other words, there's a time to it is the latter days. And during this time, God is saying, I am doing something. I'm shifting those who embody me. I mean, I'm shifting the, the church corporately. And I'm shifting you as an individual, uh, as, a body, as, as a body that contains the house of the Lord. Now, let me just move on. I want to just establish uh, something that is, very that is very important concerning this verse as we, we, we read. Now, it says, so whether you are an individual or corporately, we are the house of God. We are the temple of God. And the Bible tells us that people will come and say, let's go there. There are people. Now, this is the outworking. This is the reason why God wants to elevate and establish his house in such a high and an elevated position. Because the whole idea of exaltation means God is saying, I'm elevating you, I'm exalting you, but when I'm ex elevating you and I'm exalting you as a church and as an individual, there is something that you need to know. You are, you are an embodiment of a place. You are an embodiment of a person that people are going to run into. Because the Bible says, people will, many people are going to come and say, let us go to the house of the Lord. He will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his paths. So whether you are at school, whether you are in business, whether you are at home, and even as the church, it becomes very important because we enter seasons through revelation, through proclamation and declaration. Even as I declare, based on Isaiah, that God is ushering us into that season. In other words, now we cannot be hid. Now you will see this as I... I, I, I I, I proceed, and I believe some of you are picking up now that scripture that says, you know, you are the light of the world. It says, uh, the house that is set upon the hill cannot be hid. There goes the word of God explaining itself. So you are not set under a bushel, because under a bushel, in other words, when you put a, a candle under a bushel, people cannot see it. So God says, I'm taking you from under, I'm placing you so that through you, people will see the light. And they are going to come to your light. I'm going to explain. He will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his path. The people are going to come to you. The people are going to come to our churches. And when they get there, they must find the ways of God. When they get there, they must find the laws of God. They must, their disputes must be settled. And they say we shall walk in his path. And then look at what he says when he continues. He says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law. I want to read this again. It says, out of Zion shall go forth the law. Not out of Constitution Hill. Not out of Parliament in Cape Town. Not out of the capital in Pretoria, the Union Building. God is saying, out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he shall judge between the nations. Look at the jurisdiction of God's law. It's going to be the one 
that causes God to judge between the nations and rebuke many people. In other words, you see, the laws can be made in a nation. They can be made in the provinces. They can be made in the cities. They can be bylaws. But the ultimate law that will govern people, that will judge between the people, that will rebuke many people, it is going to be the law of God. It's going to come from the house of God. Now, in case you're wondering whether, has this ever happened? Look at the different times and seasons where most of the patriarch lives. Look at Joseph when he was in Egypt. Pharaoh had to tell everybody in Egypt. He said, everything that Joseph says, you must listen to it. See, as we come into a time of exaltation, God is going to look for those people and God is looking for us and is expecting that we must be the ones who are going to guide the people concerning his laws. Please understand, child of God, when people find good counsel from us regarding relationships, regarding marriage, regarding right living, regarding everything, you know what? That's where they will bring all the resources. That's where they will bring all the wealth. That is where they are going to bring all their commitments. Sometimes we want people to be committed, but we must be the ones that dispense the law. And we must be the ones that are an embodiment of the law of God. And where they go wrong, they will be able to see and learn and come. Notice something that is very interesting. We'll judge between the nations and we'll rebuke many people. Look at the next phrase. It says, they shall beat they are swords into plowshares. Look at the violence that is in our nation right now. Swords, it's what people use like firearms and, and, and guns and, you know, and, and weapons that people are using to kill one another. Look at how when they come to us, we are entering into a season, hear this now, where we are going to settle disputes between people where we are going to reach out to people in the prisons who are criminals, that they will say, I'm no longer using a firearm. Now I'm converted. Now I'm baptized. Now I'm teaching people how to fear the Lord. It says they shall beat their sword. It's like, you know, people taking firearms and then they are melting them and then they turn them into plowshares. People who are killing one another, they will become now productive. And, they, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift, lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. God is taking us into a season where he exalts the church. He exalts you as an individual. Remember the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. In other words, in your working environment, God wants to release you as an intercessor. God wants to release you as somebody who prays. That where there's tension, where there's fighting, where there's disputes, you are the one who's going to bring about peace. You are the one who's going to bring about peace in families. We are the ones who are going to strive for peace. The Bible says as much as it is in us, we must strive for peace. And you look, and as I was saying, that throughout history, God had to exalt his people. Look at Daniel and his friends. The Bible says they were just taken as Hebrew boys and they were serving Nebuchadnezzar, but they had to be exalted to a point where Nebuchadnezzar one day made a decree and said any person who bows to any other God except the God of Daniel shall be placed in the, in, 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 in the lake of fire. Think about, you see, what we are reading in Isaiah has already happened before. And you see, can you imagine, everybody now had to serve the God of Daniel. Whether he was in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, whether it was in the time of Belshazzar, whether it was in the time of Darius, whether it was in the time of Cyrus, everybody had to listen to the God of Daniel because Daniel was an embodiment of what we call the house of God. He was an embodiment of the house that was on the hill and everybody was running to Daniel. People must, are supposed to run to us. People are supposed to run to you. You're entering into that season where God says, I've promoted you as a church. I've promoted you as individuals. We see that what we are doing was not right. Now we are coming to you 
for you to guide us. We are coming for, to you for you to settle dispute. We are coming to you for you to bless us. And it says in verse number five, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. It says, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Before, because that's the last verse, but I know for some of us may say, well, you know, just what about Zion for that matter? I'm just going to lift up one or two scriptures that you see, just like I'm talking about the house of God, that is not just a physical house, but it's a spiritual house as we learn in 1 Peter chapter number 2. Understand that Zion is not limited to a place where you take a flight and you go to Jerusalem and say, I'm in Zion. No, Zion speaks of you. Zion speaks of the church. Here is a scripture. Psalms 125 verse 1 and 2. It says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. So when we place our trust in God, the Bible says we are like Mount Zion. Remember what I just read earlier? It says, they, 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 it says for out of Zion shall go forth the law. Now, when we trust in God, based on Psalms 125, verse 1 and 2, it says those who trust in the Lord, they are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem and the Zion there, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Saints, if we trust God, we are allowing God to become a shield around us. It says, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. So this is not just a year of supernatural exaltation. It is also a year in which God is going to protect his people. The Bible says the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. And scripture tells us that, but on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Notice, from Zion, the law shall go forth. There it says, but on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. Hear this now. I'm going to read this in succession. Catch this. On Mount Zion. So I said Zion, it compares, it speaks of you. And you must sit there and say, we are Zion. I am Zion. It says there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. We are entering into a season of exaltation. We are entering into a season where the law is going to be released from us and many people are going to come. Many people are going to change. People who are fighting, they won't fight anymore. You know, when it speaks about that they will turn their, their sword, uh, you know, they turn their sword into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, you know, it's also speak about people will never curse anymore one another. People will never insult anymore one another. People are going to speak good words. People are going to embrace one another. Hands that used to beat one another, there will be hands that will embrace and love one another. So it is very important that you understand here. It says there will be deliverance, there will be holiness, and they will, we will possess our possessions. I want to believe that for those in this house, we have seen how that God has already started to make us to possess our possession. Here, God blesses us with a facility, blesses us with a place that as we speak right now, we are possessing that place. And I said that what God has done in the house is something that God wants you to experience in your life. You will no longer look at things from far. You will no longer look at opportunities from far. They will no longer elude you, child of God. God made sure that he blessed us as a house to possess our possession. There are things that are yours, but you are not possessing them. You are not owning them. You are not ruling over them. You are not controlling them. That time is over. Because when God exalts the church, when God exalts you, when God exalts your family, you will possess your possession. So we can say that Zion is not just, you know, it's, it's tangible. It can be seen and it can even be lived in. So as we analyze Zion, we come to realize that it's not just a tangible city, but it is a spiritual city. 
that has been part and that is speaking about believers. I'm thinking about a scripture in Psalms 126 verse number one. It says, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. We are entering into a season where God is going to restore the fortunes of the church. He's going to restore the fortunes of your family. He's going to restore the fortunes of individual believers. And when he restores them, it's going to be like a dream. It will feel so unreal. Why? Because he's exalting you. He's exalting the church. That's the season that we have come in in the latter days. And the Bible also tells us in Psalms 133 verse 3, it says, when the brethren dwell together in unity. This is the outworking of that exaltation. It says, it is as if the Jew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion. Jew speaks of what? Speaks of freshness. Speaks of a refreshing. It speaks of something that is new. It says, for there the Lord bestows his blessing. Even life forevermore. Where? On Mount Zion. Notice Mount. What was the key word I read? The house of the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted high above the hills. God is raising up this temple. And you must touch yourself and say, God is raising me as God's temple. The church, God is raising up this temple, the mountain on which he stands, and the Bible says all nations will stream into it. Saints, I want to close with this. In Isaiah chapter number 60, I just read Isaiah 2. I've been laboring on it, establishing the truth and its relevance. This is your posture now. This is the posture of the church. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise. Shine. For your light has come. Notice how Isaiah chapter number 2 ends. It says, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now Isaiah chapter number 60 tells us, it says, arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is, notice the tense, it's risen upon you. It says, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you. So it's dark on the other side, but it's going to be luminous on your side. Child of God, there is light on your side. The season that we are coming in, it says, behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you because you're not under a bushel anymore. It will be seen because you are in the exalted place. Here are the blessings that are coming upon Mount Zion. When I say Zion, for the purposes of my teaching now, it's I'm speaking about the church, I'm speaking about you as, an, as a believer. The Gentiles, verse number three, they shall come to your light. Does this not sound like Isaiah chapter number two? It says the people will come to your light. And kings, to the brightness of your rising. Be expectant that it's not just mere men, but kings. Kings are people who rule. Kings are captains of the industry. Kings are people who make laws. Kings are the one who says you will get it, you won't get it. But child of God, just arise. There are people who are kings. God will speak to them. They will not sleep. The Bible says, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. So if there is no brightness, you may be just next to them and they are passing you. So we are going to arise. It says the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. You are not going to chase it. Why? Because you have come into a season in the latter days of ex supernatural exaltation. It says the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Therefore, your gates, verse number 11, shall be open continually. It's very interesting how that Isaiah, the same Isaiah wrote, verse number 2, prophesied in verse number 2. In chapter number 60, he says in verse number 11, they shall not be shut day or night. 
that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. Verse number three says the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. It says the Gentiles shall come to your light. So they come to your light. When they come to your light, they come to you. When they come to you, they find the law of God. They find you settling disputes. They find you giving them peace. And here it says the wealth of the Gentiles. It says men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. And they are kings in procession. It's like they are following each other. They are following each other. Coming to you. Coming to your business. Coming to support your business. Coming to your church. Coming to your life. Coming to your family. There are people right now, God is lining them up in a procession. He says, go to that brother. Go to that sister. Go to that church. Why? Because we are arising. It says for the nation. Now, because it's a command. <laughs> I want you to listen to the next verse. For the nation and kingdom which does not serve you shall perish. It's like God is saying, the ones who won't bless you, I will remove them. The ones who will not give you a deal, I will demote them. The ones who are stopping your breakthrough, I will demote them. Why? Because it's a season. It's a time. It says for a nation and a kingdom which shall not serve you. Get ready this coming year that there are people who are going to come and serve you. It says the ones who don't serve you, they shall perish. And those nations shall be utterly ruined. God is about to show off. God is about to show up. And he says in verse 13, the glory of Lebanon shall come to you. The glory of Lebanon. What is in Lebanon? It is the cypress. It is the pine tree. It is the box tree. It is strength to beautify the place of my sanctuary. The, sa the place of God's sanctuary, it is a corporate place. And the place of God's sanctuary, it is you. Remember, you are the temple. And it says, and I will also make the place of my feet glorious. Also the sons of those, now I love verse 14. The sons of those who afflicted you, people who hurt you, people who did not treat you, they shall come, not just come, they will bow to you. All those who despise you, they shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion. The Holy One of Israel. Do you see that Zion is not just a place? They shall call you the city of the Lord. Zion, the Holy One of Israel. When you have been forsaken, when you have been hated, God says, I will make you, I love this term. He says, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and the milk breast of kings. I mean, that reminds me of of Job when he said, I bathe my feet in milk. God is taking us to a season, is taking us to a time through this exaltation where you're going to see things that will blow your mind. You shall know that I, the Lord, I am your savior, your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. He closes by saying, in the light of the future glory of God's temple, Isaiah appealed to the people. He said, Walk in the light of the Lord. Walk in the light of the Lord. Matthew 5, verse 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. And then it says in verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city, notice the juxtaposition. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Come on now. What did I read in Isaiah? It says, the house of the Lord shall be set upon a hill. Remember what I read in Isaiah? It says, it shall come to pass in the Lord that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and exalted above the hills. And what is Isaiah? Jesus? Now Jesus is saying, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Child of God, you are not hidden. You cannot be ignored. You cannot be passed by. It says, neither do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. It says, let your light shine before men. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good work and give glory to your Father which is in heaven. I want to declare that you and I are being ushered into a season of supernatural 
exaltation. A season where God is going to set you high above all the nations which he has made. A season where you are going to dispossess nations stronger and mightier than you. I believe God already started this year. He gave us a sign that even though you're weak, I can make you to dispossess nations stronger and mightier than you. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Enter. You are entering into the season of supernatural exaltation through declaration and through revelation. Wherever you're seated, please take your elements, have them ready, and we are going to use these elements to usher us into this particular season. I don't know about you, but I am excited. I'm excited because it's not going to happen by our own power. You know when you enter into an aeroplane, you just go and take your seat. And when you take your seat, you know that even though you may not jump 10 meters high, what you are in can take you 40,000 feet above sea level. I want to say that again. When you enter into a plane, you know that you are going to soar higher. You know because what you are, you are entering into, it's an aeroplane that will take you more than 40,000 feet above sea level. When you step into the word, when you immerse yourself into the word, you will experience the season. It's not going to happen by your own strength and your own mouth. I believe many of us, we have our elements and we usher a new season. And you are going to see in the scripture that I'm going to read right now. And before I do that, I want to pray. Father, we thank you for the year 2023. We thank you for bringing us to the end of this season. And we thank you, O God, that we embrace this prophetic word like Jesus when he was speaking in the synagogue. He said, this word is fulfilled in your hearing. He was quoting from the book of Isaiah. And Lord, Today we are declaring that this word is fulfilled in our hearing. It's fulfilled in us listening and taking in this word. That Lord, you are bringing us into a place of supernatural exaltation. That you're exalting the church. You're exalting your people who are called by your name. Father, we thank you that you are bringing people and many nations to come to us. You are causing us to experience your blessing. We are going to possess our possession. We are going to experience a going forth of your law. We are going to experience people, oh God, experiencing deliverance. And we thank you. We speak like Mary during our Christmas message and say, so be it to us as you have spoken. This is not my word, and this is your word. This word is applicable to us in as far as the latter days, in as far as the mountain of God, in as far as Zion is concerned. We are able to parallel and realize that it's speaking to us, and therefore we are receiving it in Jesus' mighty name. As we are about to receive the communion, Father, we are not doing this as a ritual. We are not doing this out of tradition, but we are ushering this season of supernatural exaltation through these elements in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, wherever you're seated, I want you to pick up your bread and I'm going to read the book of Exodus chapter number 12, verse number one. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Spoke to them in a place where they were conscripted, where they were denied to live life the way they wanted. The word Egypt, the Hebrew word Mitzrayim, speaks of narrow straits, a place where they were constrained, a place where they were rationed, a place where they could not enjoy life. And God is speaking to you as this meal comes to you. He said, this month shall be your beginning of months. It's a new season. 
He said, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Child of God, I want you to take the bread and I want you to break it. And as you break it, I want you to anticipate these elements as they ushered the children of Israel in a new season that you're also going to be ushered into a new season. We may eat the bread together. Remember Jesus said when he broke the bread, he said, this is my body that is broken for you. And then afterwards, the Bible says after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, this do as often in remembrance of me. As you drink of the cup, I want you to posture yourself for that place of exaltation and for being ushered into a season of exaltation. Let us drink of the cup. We are entering seasons through proclamation and through declaration. Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 26, he said, for as often as you eat and drink this cup, you proclaim, you herald the Lord's death until he comes. You have now entered into a season of exaltation. God is going to increase your greatness and is going to comfort you on every side. Please allow me to make this declaration to you that this month shall be your month of supernatural expansion. I speak increase and expansion over your life. The God of heaven will enlarge your territory. You will expand beyond your boundaries. Every limitation over your life, every limitation in the area of your finances, every limitation in the area of your education is broken. You're going to study those things you needed to study. No more limits in the name of Jesus. You will achieve great feasts in the name of Jesus this year. You will not labor under any curse. You are blessed to succeed. Every season of frustration, every cycle of frustration is terminated in the name of Jesus. Things that have been delayed, every disappointment are a thing of the past to you. Understand that everywhere you go this season, honor and favor will be your portion. Greatness is going to locate you and find you in the name of Jesus. The work of your hands will fl flourish this season. You are going to experience an unusual restoration of everything that you have lost. God is going to turn your life around. Spiritually, you are going to be strong. Financially, you are going to experience increase. Understand that every point of your pain and disappointment is going to be turned into healing. You are going to testify about the things that the Lord is going to do. The Lord, the God of heaven is going to comfort you on every side as I read Psalm 71. Understand, child of God, that you are about to take new territories for God this coming year. Signs and wonders will follow you. Souls are going to come to the kingdom of God. Understand that all your unsaved relatives and spouses will come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a month of supernatural exaltation. You are no longer going to be the last, you are going to be the first. You are not going to be behind, you are going to be in front. You are not going to be underneath, but you are going to be above in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome to the year 2024, a season of supernatural exaltation. 
Happy New Year. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by the message and that you will put the word you've just heard into action in order for your faith to be activated. Please join us next time right here for another dose of God's word. Saints Family Church. You belong.